Right, in, in this video I will talk about the normal distribution, which is also known as the Gaussian Gaussian distribution. Gauss is a German a mathematician um, named after him. Right. Right, let's so a uh, random variable X has the normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma squared if its PDF or the probability density function is given by the following. Remember, the normal uh, distribution is a continuous distribution, so it's determined. So its distribution is specified in terms of the probability density function. Right? For for a discrete distribution, the, you use the PMF, not the PDF. Right? So the density function is given by. by this right there are there are two parameters mu and sigma square by the way x the x is the domain of the density uh, the, the parameter the domain of the density it takes values from minus to plus infinity and the two parameters mu takes values from minus to plus infinity and sigma can only take positive values and mu you will see in a minute is known as the mean parameter for, for a reason I will explain in a minute and, and sigma once again as you will see in a minute is known as the standard deviation parameter okay. the okay, the CDF uh, or the cumulative distribution function which I explained earlier in, the, in this course of, of a normal variable is given by this formula here capital Phi capital Phi uh, denotes the CDF of, of a normal variable with mu equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1 and this normal variable is known as the standard normal distribution right uh, okay uh, I'm sure you know this but I'll write it down anyway this is the standard normal random variable okay now a property of a property of, of phi is the following that phi at minus x is equal to 1 minus phi at x. Now there are tables for reading the values of this function uh, phi, right? Uh, and I will show you them right now. Okay, the table is a. This is the table. 
I was referring to. This is the table that gives you values of the function capital Phi, which is the CDF of a standard normal random variable. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples on, on how to use this table because you will need to use this table in your exam. Right? Uh, so, so let me give you a, a couple of examples, maybe two or three. So suppose so these are examples on how to use the table for reading the value of phi. Yeah. Now suppose um, suppose you want to read capital phi at 0 0.11, right? So all you have to do is to go to this table and first you look for point 0.1 which is over here and then you look for point 0.01 so point 0.1 and point 0.01 is, gives you this value here all right so so this is equal to 0 0.5438 right Example number two. Um, suppose you want to read phi at say 2.98. In this case, you need to go down this table. Let me let me pull this table upwards. Okay, here we are. So you need to look for 2.9, right, which is over here, right, and then you look for point 0.08. 0.08 corresponds to this column here, this this column here. So this is the one we will get because if, you, if I show you the beginning of the table, here we are. Uh, point, you see this is 0.08. So you look for 2.9 and then 0 0.08 to get this number here. So, so the value we are getting is 0.9986 Okay, another example um, This is an example involving negative value, right? Say suppose phi at 0. Point, minus 0 0.51 Right, so this is um, using the property which I just mentioned that phi at minus x is 1 minus phi at x. Using this property you can write it as 1 minus phi at 0 0.51. Alright, so this is 1 minus. Now phi at 0 0.51. To read that you go over here and this is 0 0.5 then you look for 0 0.01 which is which is this column here. So this this is the value for 0 0.5 at 0 0.51, which is 0 0.6950. All right, so if you compute this, if you compute this, you get 0 0.305. All right, so that is 5 at minus 0. Point so these are just three examples of how to how to read the value for phi from the table. Okay. Now there are also R commands. There are also R commands for computing the PDF and the CDF of a normal normal variable. Right. So. So these are, let me tell you what they are. So the R commands for computing
So, so the following command, so d norm x at mean equal to 0 and sd equal to 1, right, will, so this command, d stands for density, norm stands for normal. So it computes the density of the normal at x with mu stands for mean equal to 0, sd stands for sigma equal to 1. So, so this will compute the PDF of, of a normal variable with mu equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1 right at values specified by x so x is a is a vector right it can contain any number from minus to plus infinity right that's that's one the second uh, want to show you is the p norm command p n o r m open bracket x mean equal to 0 sd equal to 1 p p here stands for probability so so what this computes is the cdf of the normal distribution at x and mu is 0 and sigma is equal to 1 1 so this will this will compute the, the CDF of the normal variable with mean zero and um, SD the sigma equal to one. I mean, I have chosen in this example, I have chosen them to be zero and one, but it, they don't need to be. They can be anything. The mean can be any number from minus to plus infinity, and sigma can be any number which is positive. So these are the, the two commands uh, for computing the, the PDF and the CDF of the uh, normal distribution. Right. Okay. Right. The next thing I want to talk about is some properties. some properties of, of a variable that has a normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma squared. Uh, property one, that the expected value of x when x has this is equal to mu. So this is precisely why mu is known as the mean parameter. That's because the expectation which den denotes the mean is equal to mu. Number two, the variance of x is equal to sigma squared. Number three, the standard deviation of x, which is the positive square root of the variance, is equal to sigma. And this is exactly why sigma is known as the standard deviation parameter. Right? Okay. Number four.
if you have to, if you have two random variables, both normally distributed with these parameters and they are independent, then any any linear combination, any linear combination where a, B, and C are constants, right, will also have a normal distribution with the following. So the mean, the mean will be A B1 plus B B2 plus C and the variance will be A squared sigma 1 squared plus B squared sigma 2 squared. The next property, property 5, is the following that if you have random variable Xi which are normally distributed with mean mu i and variance sigma i squared right? i from 1 to n um, so if these are if these are independent excuse me if these are independent random variables right then the following statement is true right? that is the sum 1 to n of ai times xi where ai is constant is normally distributed with the mean equal to equal to this and the variance equal to it's equal to this right where as I said AI of constants So this is property 5. Um, by the way, you don't need to know the proof of any of these properties. I'm just, but you will need to know how to how to apply them. Uh, okay. Um, number six is the following. Mm, if If these are independent normal random variables with the mean equal to mu, variance equal to sigma square, then the following is true that x bar, which is the sample mean, well, will have a normal distribution with parameters with the mean parameter equal to mu and the variance parameter equal to sigma squared by n. So this is property 6. And property 7 if x is a normal variable with these parameters then z Is, uh, has the standard common distribution that is in other words with mean 0 and variance 1 right. I'm 
sure you guys know this is known as the standard standard normal distribution. Okay. Right. Okay, so these are the seven properties of the normal, uh, normal distribution and once again uh, no need to No need to know the proofs of any of these properties. Right? You, you only need to know how to apply them. I will, of course, I will do lots of examples later on. Okay. All right. The next thing I'm going to talk about uh, with respect to the normal distribution is estimation. Suppose Suppose you have a random sample from a normal distribution with these parameters, then and the estimates for Remember, there's no point in having mu and sigma squared are parameters. So, in, in practice, you need to be able to estimate them for given a data set, given this data set. All right, and so, um, so the estimates for mu is given by, I will denote them by mu hat. I think I mentioned this before. Whenever you have a parameter, you put a hat on top. That means it's an estimate of the parameter. Right, and this denoted by this is obviously the sample mean. And the estimate for sigma squared, once again I put a hat on top, is given by by this right and um, you, you once again you don't need to know how to prove this but it can be proved I think you will learn how to prove this when you go to year two there is a course called statistical methods um, in semester two of year two and in that course you will learn how to prove these formulas for, for the estimate for mu and the estimate for sigma squared. Okay, so so at, at this stage, at this stage, no need to. Next uh, slide, I'm going to do a couple of examples just to complete this uh, video and then I will go to the next video. Uh, example, example one.
suppose you have a uh, you have a variable x that has a normal distribution with parameters one and one. So mean equal to one and variance equal to one. And we want to calculate the probability that x is greater than two. I suppose that. Now, how do we do this? To do this, the first thing you need to know, you need to do is to convert x into a standard normal variable. And using one of the properties I just discussed a couple of minutes ago, to convert something into standard normal, you need to subtract the mean, which is 1 here, and divide by sigma, which is also 1. So what you have here is a standard normal. So this becomes a standard normal variable greater than greater than one. Okay. That's because of uh, property by property seven, right? And this you can write as one minus the probability that the standard normal variable is less than or equal to 1 and this I mentioned before that that the CDF or the cumulative distribution function for a standard normal is denoted by capital Phi right. so Phi is the CDF All right, of standard normal variable. Okay. Now, I um, in a, in a previous video I showed you how to read this from a table, right? And if you do that, you will get zero point eight four one three. Uh, so using normal table. So if you use the table I showed you earlier, this will become this, so this is the answer, right, for example, one. And uh, another example, example two. Suppose, once again, that x is a normal variable with mean equal to 1 and variance equal to 1. And, and suppose this time we want to calculate the probability that x is between minus 1 and plus 2. Right? So the procedure is the same as in example one. So you the first thing to do is to convert x into a standard normal variable. So for that you subtract mu and divide by sigma. So this becomes minus 2 less than a standard normal less than 1. So this is by property 7. Okay. Right now this you can write that write as follows. this 
this is simply phi at 1 and this is simply phi at minus 2. So once again note that phi is the is the CDF of a standard normal variable. Right? Now in this stage I'm gonna use a property I mentioned earlier in this video that you can write phi a negative number, right? As one minus minus of the negative number. So here I'm using the fact that phi at minus x is equal to one minus phi of x. Okay. Right. So So this becomes phi at 1, okay. and you can read each of these from the table that I showed you in an earlier video, right? So I think it was in this video, maybe, uh, yeah it was, I showed you earlier in this video that, okay, you, you can read this from uh, from that table for 1 equal to this right? and you can read this from the same table you get 0 0.9772 minus 1 right? so that completes example 2 right? so in this example we have used this property which I mentioned earlier in this video Right, so this completes the video on the normal distribution. The next video will be on the binomial distribution.